Hello, good morning, guidely community, guidely people, guides. We have a uh, few of you here. Um, really excited for this. We we had um, an incredible workshop with uh, Dr. Shefali Tabari uh, last week, and we had our first integration session with uh, Chris Strani uh, just a couple of days ago, which was uh, incredible. Uh, some really practical tools. Um, I'd encourage those here that have not attended to look for the um, red, yellow, green traffic light gadgets and tools that uh, help us communicate. And today we have another communication expert. Um, Cynthia Kane, we're so privileged to have you here with us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for agreeing to facilitate this. And um, we wrote uh, how to communicate like a Buddhist. Before we really start just letting people trickle in, um, you, do you mind sharing with us a little bit about your journey? What led you to write this book? Yeah. What is your book about? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I kind of got here in a really roundabout way. Uh, I uh, didn't know much about Buddhism. I didn't know anything about meditation. Um, I was a really poor communicator in my life in terms of just being like very, very passive aggressive, extremely judgmental. Um, and I really loved like walking away from situations and I hated confrontation. And I just felt like this was the way that relationships function. This was how communication was. And I had, I had been with my first love for about seven and a half years, and we had decided to kind of go our separate ways and then believing that the universe would bring us back together. And it did four years later. And one of the things that we talked about was our communication. That was one of the things that did not work. Uh, and we decided, okay, we're going to try this out. We're going to be in each other's lives again. And then four months later, he passed away unexpectedly. Um, and my whole world completely uh, shifted in that moment. I was really like a blank canvas. I was really, it was the lowest uh, place I've ever, ever been. And I really was trying to figure out how to feel better in the world. And everyone was amazing and lovely and nothing was helping me. Like, I really wanted somebody to just come in and like save me in that moment. And I realized that I was going to have to figure it out on my own. And that's when I went on kind of my journey, my search and started reading a lot, going to retreats, um, doing, you know, seminars, classes, coaches, and all of these things. And I was getting a lot of really wonderful information, though, what everything kept hitting on for me was communication. And I was really trying to figure out that piece, right? To me, that seemed like the seed of everything. And I figured that if I wanted to change the way I was living in the world, I was going to have to change the way I interacted with it. And that meant I was going to have to change the way that I interacted with other people. And then that meant I was going to have to change the way I interacted with myself. But I just had no idea how to do that. And a friend of mine recommended a meditation and writing retreat at the Shambhala Institute in New York when I was living there and I went and that weekend completely changed my life. That's where I learned how to meditate, um, which was really the first time I was able to sit with all the emotion that I was feeling, the grief, the anxiety, the fear. And also at that time, so much beauty and joy and like unbelievable appreciation for the world. And to be able to hold both of it at the same time was just something I'd never done before. Um, and that's where I learned the elements of right speech in Buddhism, which are tell the truth, don't exaggerate, use helpful language and don't gossip. And for me, that was my light bulb moment of like, this is it. This is my way through the suffering. And I, I was like, okay, I can do this. How do I do this? Right? Like, how do I speak in a kind, honest and helpful way? It sounds so easy and simple, but I, couldn't figure out how to do it. And that's really where my lifestyle experiment began. 
And it all started with this idea of first listening to myself. Then once that started happening, I could listen to others. Then I could really learn how to speak consciously, clearly, and concisely. Then I could understand how to use silence. And meditation really was like the glue through it. So that's how I found this work. That's how I then wrote how to communicate like a Buddhist and then talk to yourself like a Buddhist, how to meditate like a Buddhist and went in this direction. And I really, I did not ever think that I would be here, <laughs> but it completely changed my, my life. It, the changing the way that I communicated, speaking more intentionally really shifted all of my relationships. And I truly, truly believe that it is what has made it so that I am in like a very wonderful, healthy, um, communicative relationship now with my husband. And then it has completely made it so that my interactions with my children are easier and more calm and more responsive. And so, um, it's definitely worlds away from, you know, rolling my eyes, slamming the kitchen door or, you know, stomping my feet, basically. <laughs> so that's how I got here yeah. in a roundabout thank, way. Thank <laughs> no, thank you for, uh, it feels like in a very direct way. Sh sh thank yep. you for, yeah, thank you for sharing this uh, story with us. It really touches my heart and, uh, and I feel like I want to invite you and everybody else. We have a, we're doing a live um, uh, workshop tomorrow with uh, um, with uh, Coach Dar. She um, is publishing a book called The Art of Bouncing Back. Mm. Um, she has worked with um, Fortune 100 CEOs, mm. with uh, um, celebrities, um, professional athletes on, in all leagues, um, helping them to bounce back including, by the way, uh, politicians. And she had learned bouncing back after having four strokes in her life that every time put her in a, you know, in a situation that was unexpected. So it sounds like your story is also a little bit of a story of bouncing back. So mm -hmm. I, I invite you and everybody else to, to join us tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds um, great. Maybe, maybe we'll drop here uh, guy in the chat uh, the link to, or we don't really have a link, it's going to be live on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, YouTube, etc. Yeah. Um, and and congratulations on doing that shift. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I wanna. I think um, I wanna give you the stage and uh, sure. let you lead us through this integration session. Okay. Uh, and maybe we'll uh, come back for uh, Q and A. Um, okay. Later. Good. All right, well, so I love uh, to just start by everybody closing their eyes for a moment. And just to settle into the space that you're in. And you can begin to notice the sounds around you. It can be sounds within the room that you're in or maybe they're farther away. And if it's quiet, just notice the sound of silence there. And I want you now to call to mind an interaction that you've had with your family, that might have been stressful or a difficult interaction with one of your kids, with a parent, whatever it might be. And once you have this in mind, place your attention on what the interaction looks like in terms of what is your body language doing? What type of language are you using? Maybe the pace of your language. How are you treating the other person? Uh, 
And even after the conversation happened or during how you're treating inanimate objects. You can let this image go. And now call to mind an interaction that you had that felt really good. Maybe it felt productive or it felt like you were really seen, really heard, really supported. And bring this to mind. And notice here what's happening within this interaction. What's your body language look like? What kind of language are you using? What's the pace, the rhythm? How are you treating the glass on the table, your phone? those inanimate objects. We'll go ahead and let this image go. And just take a minute to connect with the breath. So wherever you feel the breath most clearly in the body and just let that be your point of attention. Maybe it's at the nostrils or the chest, maybe the belly. And let go of the breath. Just sit in the stillness here. Blink your eyes open, rolling your shoulders back, maybe circling your wrists. And just notice the shapes and colors around you and come back. So I like to start this way because I think that when we're talking about conscious parenting or conscious communication, it's important for us to start to pay attention to how we are interacting, right? And especially starting to see what it looks like for us when we're in those difficult interactions and what it looks like for us when we're in the interactions where it just feels more open and more connected. So I'd love in the chat for you to put just kind of some of the, some of your observations, right? So when you were seeing yourself in that difficult interaction, what was your body language like? What was your pace like? Um, how were you treating inanimate objects? Um, and just what did you notice about your behavior, right? Um, a lot of times when we are in stressful interactions, we can notice a change in pacing, right? A lot of things can feel like we're talking really quickly, Maybe we're getting louder, right? Um, maybe we see that, you know, we've kind of pulled our energy back. We're not as forward. Um, I noticed how much tension my body holds. Yes, right? In those difficult interactions, we really hold a lot of stress within the body. Um, body language was closed off. My pace felt frozen, holding my energy in. Notice wanting to pull back and hide. Yes. So. All of these are reactions that we have in stressful interactions very fast, yeah. And this is totally normal because as humans, we are made to react, right? And so we are just in these difficult interactions and all we wanna do is get through them pretty quickly. We wanna be heard, right? 
um, or we move into kind of our default reactions of wanting to shut down, get passive aggressive, and we just pull back, right? And then you think of the interaction where it's going really well and it feels really good. What's happening there, right? Like, what does that interaction look like? Um, and you might notice that it feels really, really different, right? The, the body feels more relaxed. There may feel like it's a slower pace, um, very calming, right? Melting, yeah. So sometimes an image that I, I see often is like sitting in a coffee shop with a friend and just it's like, I'm leaning back, I'm open, I'm receiving the information, I'm really present. Yes, open, relaxed, full of energy, but not forced, right? And so what we're really wanting more of in our life are these more open interactions, these more relaxed interactions where we feel more calm or we feel we have more energy when we leave, right? But so much of our interactions often are the opposite, right? A lot of them are difficult interactions and um, they can happen really quickly. And so it can make it really difficult for us to access this place where we feel calm and relaxed, right? So a lot of, um, a lot of the real work and practices to uh, becoming you know, conscious of connecting in the way that we want to be connecting is first understanding the most important piece with communication is your body, right? The sensations within your body. And when you look at, when you think of that interaction that was stressful, where did you go, right? Like, did you get passive aggressive? Um, I think one of the responses was hiding. I think Chris, you were saying going back and hiding, right? And all of us have a default reaction of some kind when we get in difficult interactions and we go to either, you know, lashing out, getting passive aggressive, we dodge, we over explain, um, we can walk away, we can shut down, right? I mean, the other day with my children, we were in the library and, you know, a library is a very quiet place and we were checking out and my daughter, Raya, she wanted me to give her the Pete the Cat book. And I was about to give it to her. And then she started just screaming and crying. You know, in that moment, I can scream and cry at the same time, right? I can lash out at her. I can, you know, pick her up by the arm and drag her out. There are so many different reactions that I could have, right? The one that I do want to have, I want to have a more calm reaction. I want to engage with her in a way that's going to help her understand that I understand her and, you know, we can leave the library in like a reasonably relaxed way, right? Um, so we all have these default reactions. Mine, I get passive aggressive and I walk away, right? So I would just love if you know kind of what your default reaction is to just pop it in the chat. Um, because this is really the first piece to becoming conscious is understanding what we do in those moments when we, like we feel stressed in an interaction, right? Um, fight mode or shut down, yes, right? And all of these are our normal reactions. This is just how our bodies were made, right? This is us um, feeling like we are threatened in some way and we need to help ourselves in that moment. And this is how we defend ourselves. This is how we survive that moment. We over explain, yes, over explain or freeze, go quiet, shut down, shut down, walk away. Yes. So the beautiful piece about this is we often see these behaviors as the enemy. Like this is wrong. This is bad. We should not be walking away. We should not be getting passive aggressive right now. But these really, in the way that I see this is that these are your superpowers because this is your body telling you, oh, you're about to react in this way, right? So there's a sensation that goes along with this action. And I want you to think about that for a minute. So when you shut down, when you go quiet, when you over explain or you freeze. And if you think back to that um, 
the scenario that you kind of saw in the beginning, the difficult one, what was happening in your body? So sensation is not feeling. Sensation is like, was it warm in there? Was it tingly? Was it um, like your heart was beating really fast? Your palms are sweaty. I swallow a lot, right? Sometimes people's jaw will get really uh, clenched up really tight. And so we wanna start to become really familiar with that sensation. What is that sensation, right? Because that sensation is the cue for you to know, oh, I'm about to lash out. I'm about to shut down. I'm about to walk away in this conversation. And when we start to become aware of that sensation and aware, oh, this is leading to our default reaction, then we get this amazing opportunity to shift that, right? Um, and so as, you know, Dr. Shivali talks about how it is, it's really all about us in a lot of ways, like all about us changing ourselves um, to have the relationship we want to have with our children. This is the same. We have to start connecting with ourselves, communicating with ourselves differently first before we can then communicate with others, right? And it starts really with this identification of the sensation in the body, the default reaction. Does this make sense? You can put a one in the chat if it makes sense. Um, so we all have these sensations um, and we all have these awesome and we all have these default reactions. And so usually, you know, we let our default reaction take the stage. It like runs the show. And often when it runs the show, we, there's, there's no chance for connection uh, because we, we then put the other person in their default reaction, right? So, and you can start to see it when you pay attention, you know, when you're engaging uh, with, with anybody, right? You can really begin to see if they're going into their default reaction, you know that the way that you're communicating with them is you know causing like it's uncomfortable for them right but first this is like the first step right sensation in the body is about to tell you that you're going to default so what do you do in that moment right what you do in that moment is you start talking to yourself differently in that moment okay because right now everything is outward focused it's like why, why in the world is my daughter screaming and yelling right now in the library when I'm about to give her her book? She has no idea <laughs> that I'm about to give her her book. She doesn't know. I mean, you know, in my mind, I just go directly to what she's doing that's not working, what she's doing that's wrong. How can she be like acting this way, thinking this way? And then, you know, it sets me off to be like, what am I not doing? And, you know, we get all into this like chaotic realm here. So instead, we want to understand that we have to soothe ourselves first, okay? So what that means is you start to let yourself know that you are safe and that you are okay in that moment. Because like I said before, this is a natural reaction for us to get passive aggressive, to shut down, to walk away because we feel threatened in some way right? The cortisol is pumping through our body. It's the fight, flight, freeze feeling, right? And what we need to know in that moment, what our body needs to know more than our brain is that we're safe, that we're okay, that we've got this, that it's, that it's time for us to access that rest in that body, the calm in the body, right? That's why meditation is so important because meditation trains us to access calm like very easily, right? Where we get to sit in that space and understand what it feels like in the body. So here we are, you know, I want to like yell at my daughter and instead I'm like, oh, I'm feeling threatened right now. Okay, we've got this, Cynthia. We're okay. We're safe right now. So you want to find a way to touch your body. Like in, you know, often I do this with my fingers where it's like, I'm okay, everything is fine. We've got this, you can rub your chest, you can squeeze your fist into your leg, 
right? You can even do like this one, but you, you find a way to soothe yourself in that moment with your language. So it's like, I understand you're feeling really stressed out right now, Cynthia. You really want to react this way. It's okay. We're safe. We're fine. We're good. Let's take a breath. And then you take a breath. You come into the present moment. And you're like, what are my feet doing? What are my hands doing? What's my belly doing? And then, then you can look at your child or then you can look at your family member or then you can look at somebody else and have a conversation, right? So everyone will find that place of rest in their body. It will be different. But the most important piece is to understand that in that moment, what you need to do is soothe yourself, okay? Does this make sense? You can put a two in the chat if it does. Okay, great. Yes, awesome. All right. So yeah, so once you have talked to yourself differently in the moment, right? And you're just letting yourself know that we're good, we're okay, we're here, like I'm here for you. We understand you're feeling this way. It's okay, right? I'm just gonna give myself a hug. You know, when you're in public, you're not necessarily gonna do things like this and you're not gonna like hug yourself like this, but you're gonna be able to like, I'll rub, this is what I usually do. I like rub the inside of my palm and I'm like, we've got this, we're good, right? Um, or you can like rub your chest up here. Uh, and it's important though to put the words with touch to the body, right? Because the body has to understand that you're connected to it and talking to it to access that calm. So now you're in your rest and digest, right? Stage. And then you can talk. Then you can talk in a kind, honest, and helpful way. Then you can connect. Then you have access to yourself to be able to um, see clearly, right? And that's really the most important piece, I believe, to communicating because then once you get to that place, then you know what to say, right? You say the right things at that moment because you've actually taken care of yourself to get to the place where you can talk. So, um, so yeah, so I can share more for sure. Um, and, but I do want to just see if, you know, there's any questions right now around anything that I've shared. Yeah, this, this is, this is great. Um, I, I feel, uh, that that tool, um, comes up, um, time and again here, um, mm -hmm. Gabby Bernstein in her workshop yeah. uh, that we did with her just a couple of months ago, uh, said the peace begins with me. That's beautiful. Peace yeah. Begins. You can do that in that moment, right? Peace begins <clears throat> with me. Or the other one is the thank you. I love you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. Thank yeah. you. I love you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is definitely a, a great way to shift our mindset from the auto response to a, a more conscious response that we yeah. choose. Thank yeah. you. Um, so, so I, I, I think the, the communication piece in parenting is, uh, so extremely challenge, challenging or can be so extremely challenging because yeah. we, our kids know us so well, and we know our kids so well, um, in a way that just like a, a romantic partners, um, we know the operating system and we know how to activate all the buttons very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, just press on it and everybody uh -huh. gets uh, spiraling. So it's really the, the fundamental <clears throat> piece of any relationship <clears throat> with ourselves. <clears throat> with ourselves first and foremost, we talked about reparenting with uh, Dr. Shafali and then, you know, with our kids. Mm -hmm. And so thanks for bringing more light on that part. I think it's uh, yeah. creating space to be able to respond from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it really is, it's so important to, because the first step is truly to listen to ourselves, right? First, we're listening to the sensation in our body 
we're listening to the language that we speak. Um, not only more in the beginning, it's really learn listening to how we're talking to ourselves, right? How we're talking to ourselves about parenting, how we're talking to ourselves about, um, you know, our parents, how we're talking to ourselves about the role of being, um, you know, a daughter, a son, a niece, a friend, like the way that we talk to ourselves is so important because most of the time, the way we're talking to ourselves isn't helpful, right? It's hurtful. And it, most of the time it's not true. And so starting to really pay attention to the way that we are talking to ourselves about our children is really important. Um, is it helpful? Like, is it helping us connect with our children the way that we're talking to ourselves about our children, right? Or about our parents or how, who, whomever, right? Um, and that's really one of the, the first pieces is to start to pay attention to, you know, shifting the way that we talk so that it's more helpful and more objective so that then you can start to see clearly who you're talking to, right? Like you, you see this person in front of you that doesn't have all these judgments attached to them or blame attached to them or, um, you know, expectation attached to them. And instead you get to see this person just clearly. So um, <clears throat> do you think that sometimes the way we talk to our kids is the way <clears throat> we want to, or we talk to our inner child? Yes. Yeah. And that, that's so much a part of that moment where you have to soothe yourself, right? Because it is that same idea of parenting yourself in that moment, of nurturing yourself in that moment. Um, and understanding that we can like we can be the ones who wrap our arms around ourselves and care for ourselves and not necessarily need it from the outside right um and there is something that in this like in this work of intentional communication really being able to see that when you go when you go back to your you know your childhood or those moments where it things felt really really difficult for you right you end up finding that most of the things that were difficult for you then are what are preventing you from having the relationships you crave now and so then it is it's going back to that place and, and just saying like we've got this we're good you know like let's let's do this together um it's so important yeah, you know, you know the the word that I don't hear you say, but I hear you say it so many times is uh, compassion. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, it is. I mean, it's a practice of compassion, <clears throat> self compassion, right, and then compassion for others. And I I think sometimes people when they hear the word compassion, they think of just being kind, but really compassion is truly being able to sit with someone who is suffering in their suffering, like to witness somebody else's suffering, right? So that's what we're doing in the moment where we're hurting inside and we want to lash out or we want to shut down. We're saying, I'm going to sit with you in this suffering. I'm going to acknowledge that you're suffering. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm not going to try to change it. I'm just going to give you a hug right now and let you know we're okay. We've got it, right? And it's the same thing with the family member or the child who, you know, is screaming in the library. <laughs> and it's like, can I, can I be in that with her? Can I just grab her? And can I be like, we're okay. We've got this. We're fine. Right. It is. And it's, it's being able to access it. And the way I see it, it's like, there's this little, there's this little moment where you get to switch it on or you get to keep it off. Right. Um, and it's that, that choice of like, it's active com because compassion is like an active act. Right. Right. Yeah. So I want to maybe invite uh, others if uh, you guys have any questions or um, whether as parents or as kids that work with your parents that um, have uh, questions, feel free to uh, either drop it in the chat, raise your hand, or we're a small enough group where you can unmute yourself and, uh, and um, ask uh, Cynthia. And that's beautiful. I love the, in mindful communication, there's like the red, yellow, green, and that's what Chris talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that 
that is exactly it's you you get to that place where you are calm in the body and then you get to choose you look at the other person and you're like I want to be helpful to this person right I want to like I know that this person cares for me how can I be helpful to them how can I be present in this moment with them do I want to talk to them about this do I not like you have the space to then be able to choose is this a conversation is this not how do I want to respond right so it's, yeah. I, yeah. I do want to share um, that um, we're going to give away Dr. Shefali's books uh, to people who participated in the integration session. So we'll provide the details um, right when, before we're done. So just um, for everybody, go ahead. Yeah, so you access this place, right? And you're able to then look at the other person and then you get to speak, right? You get to speak consciously, clearly, and concisely. So now you're conscious, you're aware of the words that you're using. And then you start to speak in a way that somebody else can understand, right? Most of the time when we talk, we use a lot of extra words. Uh, we dance around. We don't actually talk to what it is that we want to talk to. Um, We'll say things like, you know, do you want to turn off the light instead of can you turn off the light, right? So we start to pay more attention to making sure our language is clear. So that means it's really specific and it can't be misunderstood. So if you're letting somebody know, like if you're letting, you know, your child know that you want them to, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say like, stop watching a screen, right? They're on like the screen and they it's like time for them to be off. It's it's one thing to be like, okay, it's time, you know, it's time to get off. And they're like, I don't really know what that means because for them time, I mean, that could be five minutes, that could be 10 minutes, right? Um, and so to be really specific and clear, you're like, right now, I'd like you to, you know, hand me the tablet right? Now it's time to be off the screen. So you start paying attention to seeing how being clear really makes it easier for the other person to understand you because you want to try to um, make it so that there's not a lot of misunderstanding, right? There's no space for confusion. So you focus more on specific language um, and being concise. So that's a part of it as well. She, she talked a little bit about um, one of our uh, misperceptions of uh, being in control. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's one of those things that, um, you know, the, 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 there is a fine line between clear communication and putting yourself in control or yeah. thinking we're in control. Mm -hmm. How do you balance those two? Yeah. Because so, when you tell your kids, give me your tab tablet or give me your whatever it is, it's you're taking control. Yeah. So I think there's a there's a difference between you know ordering people around um, and telling people what to do, and um, and then letting others feel their agency in that moment. Right. So, you know, with, with giving, there, there has to be rules, right? There has to be uh, guidelines that children follow, right? Um, if not, if there are no rules and no guidelines that children follow, then it would be really hard, right? To, to do much of anything. Um, and so I think that the the balance is really more around um, it it feeling like they have a choice, even if they don't have a choice, right? So the language reflects that. So it would look like, um, you know, right like right now, it's time for you uh, to give me the the tablet. I'll give it back to you, you know in like tomorrow morning, 
right? That shows them that they like will get it back, right? It's not like you're just taking it from them or like, no, right? Um, the other thing too, I think is when with, you know, little kids, you can talk more to the options that they have, right? So instead of like, you have to practice guitar right now, it's like, why don't you let me know what days this week you want to practice guitar, right? So they're still doing what they said they were going to do. It's just more, they feel like it's their choice of when they're doing it, right? Um, and with rules too, I think there are some that it's just like a known, you know, you get to do, you get the screen time for two hours after dinner and that's it. And then when those two hours are up, the screen is gone, right? So did that answer the question? Yeah. It, it, it did. Um, it, it, um, I'm still in that place of, um, you know, the inner child in me yeah. feels uh, you may uh, package it very nicely, mm -hmm. um, but I still feel like you're trying to control me. Yeah. And that requires a conversation then, right? I believe that it requires a conversation. Like if, if your child is like, you're still trying to control me, then it is a conversation <clears throat> of yeah. like understanding right or sharing um or you know sometimes my kids will be like I didn't I didn't like the way that you just talked to me mommy and it's not about me being like well sometimes I'm gonna be like that because I'm your mommy and you know you're a child and right um instead it's like oh thanks like thanks for sharing that with me like I'll work on that you know um so that there is, there's a relationship that you can have where they can say, like, you're being mean or like, you're being angry with me. And instead of making excuses and denying it and trying to explain it, you're like, you're right. I am because I'm really frustrated right now. Right. And because I'm really frustrated, I need to take a deep breath and count to four. Do you want to do it with me? You know? And then they're like, oh, take a deep breath, count to four. I mean, these are little, little people I'm talking about, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so um, I, I know, um, you know, we talk a lot parenting wise, but I wonder, um, especially, you know, your work around um, communication, um, it's not just with our kids, right? It's it's our yeah. loved ones, our business partners, our yeah. teammates. You know, how how do we and and that fine line between communicating something hard mm -hmm. um, that you know that somebody is not going to like hearing, yeah, um, and still making them bring you know put in the spotlight on something and bring mm -hmm. some awareness to it. Yeah. Um, for me personally, it's one of the hardest things for me to do because I, I only want to do the good things. Yeah. <laughs> the, hey, this this wasn't quite right. It's not, you know, and so so it's a it's an art. I feel like it's not necessarily. A, you know. It is. It's a practice. I mean, I really believe that communication is a practice, right? Um, it's like you know, you go to the gym to work out. You work your muscles. You it's the same thing with communication. Um, and it's something that you're practicing every day. That's the most wonderful piece about it is that you're in constant communication all the time, even if not with other people, you're in communication with yourself. Um, here we are. And here we are, right? Um, and it is, I think it is about, um, you know, understanding that what you're responsible for within a conversation, right? So the other person or group of people, they're responsible for their reactions, their words, um, how they use silence, how they're using their body language. Um, and you're responsible for your words, how you're using silence, your facial expressions, your body language, your reactions, and what you have in the middle is the health of the conversation. So it's 
it's more when you're in an interaction and you start to see that, you know, it's going into hurtful territory. It's your job really to keep the integrity of the conversation intact. Um, and so you then start to be able to understand that if I have something difficult I have to express, my role is truly to express it in a kind, honest, and helpful way. And the other person will have whatever reaction they have. See, usually we're of the mindset there's good reactions and there's bad reactions, right? And we only want good reactions. We don't want bad reactions, but there's no good or bad reactions. There's just reactions, right? And so the, the practice is to see, can I hold space for whatever the reaction is, right? So often we share something that's difficult and then, you know, we kind of go into like this chaotic, it's like in my mind, it just looks like scribbles, right? Um, we're talking to ourselves because we're nervous that the other person is upset. The other person might be upset. So then they're talking to us in ways that we don't like. So then we go into our passive aggressive behavior or whatever it might be. And instead the practice in that moment is, can we, like, can I just be the Atlas man and hold space for this reaction? Can I just let this person react? and not attached to the words that they're using or their reaction itself. So you just hold space for the reaction and then the reaction will die down. You don't grab the rope and then, and then you continue or then you, know, you go back to what it is that you were trying to connect with them on to begin with. Yeah. So yeah, but it is a practice for sure. We, we, we had the privilege of hosting Harvard Hendricks and Kali mm Hunt. -hmm. Um, yeah. Developed um, the Imago method and um, safe conversations, and yeah. uh, and the foundation of it is so profound. I believe in in the way <clears throat> that um, we create a safe space. We pre-agree on creating a safe space, and <clears throat> who is holding space for who in this part of the conversation, and yeah. and I think the biggest piece that I always tell. Um, Harvard is that for me it's the acknowledgement it's the it's when you say something and the other party acknowledges that you're heard you're seen and you know even if I were in your shoes I would feel the same way yeah that that process really creates uh, uh, the compassion and mm -hmm. the and the experience that makes it a safe conversation yeah. And I always say if we could do that inside, you know. Yeah. Of course I would be frustrated right now if she's mm -hmm. in the library. Where else can she better be heard? Right. But that's also what you're doing right in that moment where you want to go into your default reaction. Right? Yeah. You're offering that acknowledgement to yourself. Oh you're feeling like really stupid right now. Oh, you're feeling embarrassed. Oh, you're feeling misunderstood. I get it. We're good. Got you, you know? Yeah. So yeah. And, and, and she might not be the first child streaming in the library. No, maybe not. <laughs> Great. Um, anybody else have any other questions before we bring this to a close? This is uh, this is really great and really appreciate your your time and uh, and wisdom and experience um, and the beautiful delivery method. I think uh, I feel like uh, sometimes the deepest messages comes in a very subtle and um, and gentle way. Mm. And we live in a society where we need something to be flashy and screamy. Uh, and this was uh, a very subtle, but also a very deep message of really um, self-acknowledgement and, um, and soothing and regulating mm -hmm. or responding. responding. The, the Victor Frankl has this famous quote that some people say is not his, but uh, you know that the choice is the, in the space between the stimulus and response and you're offering us a tool to expand yeah. that uh, space so thank you for that you're welcome yeah thank you for having me yeah so um would love to maybe uh drop uh 
uh, a form for those of you who would like to get a copy of the book. Uh, I think we have a, a link for that. Those of you who would like to work with Cynthia, um, we have a link for that. Those of you who want to meet Chandel and be met with one of our incredible guides, uh, we would love to drop here in the chat also a link for that. And, um, and I think I'd love for everybody to maybe unmute, get into a, uh, a gallery mode. And uh, those of you who are comfortable to open your camera, so we can just uh, wish each other a wonderful day. Um, and uh, wherever you are in the world, thank you for being with us.